Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Burn the Ship. Um, this is the podcast where we connect entrepreneurs with professionals to help you go all in on your business. Thank you for coming. I do appreciate that. Um, our goal is to really introduce the audience, people that are you know, prospectively owning businesses or new to owning businesses right now, um, to people that have kind of walked the walk and talked the talk in the business world and kind of experienced that thing for themselves. Um, so I appreciate you coming in. Why don't you introduce yourself, introduce your business? Sure, man. So my name is Lee Winterbore. I own Exterior Cleaning Solutions. Um, so I started that probably a year and a half ago, um, close to two years ago. Um, and kind of, I'd known for a while that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, but I just didn't, that's like, you know, uh, it, it takes a lot of, um, I guess guts really. And just like, you know, there's all these, there's a lot of unknowns, mm -hmm. um, when you're making that. Cause I had always worked for, I worked for other people. Um, and then I, and then my situation was like, I, I knew that I, that I, I wanted to do my own thing. Um, and so I kind of ended up like jumping around different jobs. I'm like, man, what's, what's going on? Why am I not fitting in, in this environment? Um, sure. and then finally, like, um, my dad had introduced me into pressure washing and I was in construction at the time. Um, so I did, um, a lot of, uh, construction work. I was working for, you know, different construction companies. Um, and so I wasn't, wasn't happy with what I'd had a degree in, um, construction management. And you were in the military before that, right? That's correct. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I had, I did have some military experience. I was in the Marine Corps, um, which, you know, that, that has, that element has, you know, transferred into helping me be an entrepreneur. Sure. Um, well, that discipline goes a long way. Yeah. That, I think it's hard to shake after, uh, it is after, yeah. you know, being in the military. So. Right. Um, so yeah, that, that, that aspect definitely helped. Um, but kind of going back to what kind of got me into where I'm at now was just, I, I was, wasn't really happy with what I was doing in construction. Um, I knew that I wanted to do my own thing just didn't know like where to start. Sure. Um, and so I kind of ended up being like this stuck position for a little while. My dad was like, you know, Hey Lee, you should check out this, um, this pressure washing thing. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know, dad, pressure washing. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that's very profitable, mm -hmm. um, uh, thing, but you know, I got to, I researched it, uh, did a lot of, um, looking into it and, you know, and then eventually, you know, decided to go all in, um, on, on pressure washing and soft washing, which is kind of a new, it's a newer service, right? I mean, um, I was kind of mentioned that in the BNI meeting this morning is that, you know, roof cleaning hasn't been around for mm -hmm. very long. I mean, right. probably 20 years, you know, tops. Um, I think when most people think of pressure washing, they think of, you know, pressure that blows stuff off the side of your house. Sure. But that's the games came a long way. You yeah. know what I mean? The, the understanding of, chemicals and chemicals that won't kill stuff i didn't realize how important that was too but chemicals that won't kill your plants and stuff like that um you could do a lot yeah yeah and it's just kind of evolved so mm -hmm. um pressure washing in general has just kind of turned the corner as far as um being a being a being a like a service that is um a profitable mm -hmm. you know business um, you know, a lot's changed in the industry. And like I said, like not everybody knows you can get your roof cleaned or those black streaks on your roof. You can get those removed. Um, so there was a lot of things that I, that I took into account when I decided to just, you know, say, it. and at some point I think it was, um, yeah, it was about a year and a half ago, man. I just was like, you know, I've had enough of construction. construction. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've always wanted to just I'd always this burning, like I knew I'd had the entrepreneurial spirit. Like I knew I wanted to work for myself. Um, that was always evident. It was just, which way do I do it? I had a million ideas. You know, I'm pretty sure if you're an, if you have that entrepreneur spirit and gene, it's like, yeah, ideas just pop into your head. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I, can... I think I being idea oriented is one yeah. of the precursors to entrepreneurship. That's sure. for sure. Um, but yeah, it was just a means of choosing something like, what are you going to do? And, and how are you going to do it? And and like you said, go all in and just burning the ship mm -hmm. on that. So what was that process like of getting set up? Right, like how much how much did you feel like you knew about business? You know, or did you just kind of yeah. go for it and learn as you go? Um, yeah. So 
being being working in other home service industries like construction and I worked some other companies um like I had you know a lot of interactions with homeowners so that really helped me out so you knew your customer pretty decent yeah yeah I mean it was easy for me to talk to them I'd been in you know in people's homes and you know kind of felt comfortable with just talking to people in their home which you know is important um, to gain trust and, and that type of thing. Absolutely. So, and then, you know, do you, what did you learn kind of early on? Like what were, tell me this, what were you doing? Well, kind of as you start your business up, right? Like mm-hmm. what were the skills that you possessed? You're like, okay, this is going to take me a long way. Like knowing how to talk to your customer in their, in their environment, in their domain. Right. And then tell me kind of the flip side of that coin. Like as you were starting your business, what did you not know you needed to be good at that you had to learn pretty early? Or like, what was more difficult than you kind of, uh, per, you know, thought about, you know, proceeding that process of getting your business started? Up? Right. Yeah. I think one of the things that I did well was, um, I was, I'm kind of technically or, oriented. So like I knew that I knew the technical aspects of like, you know, pressure washing and I could go in and be like, a um, and fix things and, sure. um, use my hands, uh, that helped. Um, and then, and then kind of having like a structure, uh, you know, that kind of goes back to the military thing. So I, I knew I could structure, be on my own, have a, without, um, having a boss to tell me like, Hey, you need to do this today. You need mm-hmm. to do that. You know, I had that kind of drive to be like, Hey, I need to get this done today. Mm-hmm. Um, complete this task, do that. Uh, and then basically, I think the other thing that really helped me out was, uh, like, like I just mentioned, was um, just being able to talk to people. Mm-hmm. That's real. I think that's a big, um, that's a, that's a big thing. I think in in any entrepreneurial uh, endeavor is just you know. Yeah, being able to have a conversation with yeah. people beyond just here's the price. Do you want it or not? Like that building of the relationship with the person that you're talking to is a very very difficult thing. Like we were watching something the other day. Um, and my buddy who's a salesperson, he actually, um, he runs like a big portion of Sonny's car washes, right? So like mm-hmm. people that are popping up car washes everywhere, he sells right. them and helps them acquire chemicals and all those things. And he used to sell, um, roofs. I think it actually was, he used to, he used to sell roofs, but he was like, I used to do that. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, when we were watching this guy on YouTube that I love his, um, uh, his content. I'll show it to you after actually. Okay. It's probably um something that you could mimic that could be really good for you. But nice. he um he wipes his feet like on their doormat as they're answering. He's like okay. always wiping his feet every time and yeah. he's like, Yeah, I used to do that every time and I was like, Why did you do that? And he was like so that when somebody answers the door they like expect you to be coming in the, like you're already expecting and anticipating to be invited in their home. Right? Sure. And I was like, Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? But then they you sit there and watch people that are really good at that mm-hmm. door to door in a in a homeowner environment and like you can break down those walls really really quick you right. know what i mean and if you can it's a real hindrance to your to your sales to your sales game sure yeah and like i sales experience like i'm not a natural salesperson um that i i can talk to people mm-hmm. but is when it comes to selling i'm like Ugh, you know yeah, no, <laughs> you know I what i mean it. you know that's not my it was not my strong point is selling because I'm, I'm always I was the person if you come to my door like I'm I'm probably I'm not gonna like slam the door in your face but I'm also probably not gonna be um you know I'm not gonna be uh, like wanting to know more about yeah, what you're sure. trying to sell me um so that was like I had to work on that mm-hmm. and I think I've gotten a lot better at that the last year um because you have to yeah you definitely have to if you don't um then the, the ship that you just burned is going to sink. So mm-hmm. how did you, what, what were some of those processes that you made for kind of getting business? Like as you're starting, I'd assume the, one of the first hurdles that you tackle is, you know, getting your business set up, LLC, bank account, all those things. Yeah. Well, then you have to go to equipment. Like where did you find your equipment and, and getting those things set up? And then as you kind of acquire your equipment and all of those things, and you kind of get yourself set up on that end, like how did you start getting business? So, I I knew I knew that I wanted to do my own thing. I knew I wanted to go out and like and be an entrepreneur. So I'd saved up some some money, um, and then I went out, found a guy in Florida who was selling a pressure washing rig. Um, so 
and that at that point I was like all in on like hey I'm gonna do this so I, I bought that rig um, and then it was just uh, I started part time so uh, going back like I think it was October of um, maybe 21 I think um, and so I, I was getting on some work I was putting some stuff out on Facebook um, like hey got you know just just basic stuff like I'm starting my own business now I'm doing some pressure washing and at first it was just on the side mm-hmm. just part-time um, so did that put some posts out um, let friends and family I think that's the big thing is like once you're start you got to let your friends and family know like what you're doing um, so your immediate network you, know, you got to hammer that and make sure you're you know you're letting everybody who could possibly give you business, you know, let them know what, you know, what, yeah, for what, sure. what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So use your sphere of influence. Yeah. Um, so use my sphere of influence to kind of get started. Um, and that really helped. So I think that was a big, that was a big factor was just the people that I knew going to them and be like, Hey, you, know, you guys, you know, who needs pressure washing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, support my small business. Exactly. It's yeah. yeah. a good start. Yeah. And so what what have you learned now kind of about getting business now? Because the low hanging fruit has been picked, yeah. I'm assuming. So what are are you, you know, still yep. advertising via Facebook and obviously B and I's probably helped a little bit of, of stuff sure. like that. Are you creating relationships with real estate agents? Like what's kind of the name of the game? Yeah. Today? Um so in the beginning it was just I, I used a lot of Facebook, which was really beneficial. Um, that really helped me out, kind of get the ball mm-hmm. rolling. Um, I would post in, um, like these yard sale groups and I still do sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, just yard sale groups. Yeah. My wife is a member of every single one of those. Yeah. So, um, she, and she sends me shit like that. So it works. Right. You know, cause she'll be like, Hey, do we need our house pressure wash? Or mm-hmm. like, Hey, I think we need a new roof. And I'm like, no, stop yeah, answering yeah. people on Facebook for right. yard sale groups. Yeah. Like, so it definitely works because it is getting the attention of my very home oriented and wanting to upgrade the house all the yeah. time life. So no, it definitely works. And if you're just starting out a business, right? Like you're not going to want to choose the most expensive path of marketing and sales. Like that's true. Um, so you want to, if you're, you know, if you're like me and I was on a budget, um, that's a really good thing to do is just, you know, go on Facebook and, post in every group and I was doing it a couple times a day for like weeks at a time Mm -hmm. um until I think it just kind of fizzled out I don't know I don't know if people got tired of like looking at it but um and then I was other then I started going into other avenues of marketing and stuff so I don't do that as much anymore but when I first started out that was definitely like a uh, a tactic that worked. Sure. And now it's, uh, I'm assuming it's more referrals. You've kind of got your business established a little bit like that. Yeah. Referrals. And honestly, like, um, this is where the, the sales, um, you know, having to learn sales and stuff, uh, really comes in as door knocking. Like I didn't, for me, it, it's another low cost entry to get your, to get in front of the, your customer, get your name out there. Um, and I don't like, like, I don't mm-hmm. like doing it, but it's super effective. Mm-hmm. Um, especially for a, for a newer business owner in the service industry. What's kind of your plan of attack when you go door knock? Man, you, you really have to be, you got to be like in a good mood. You got to be smiling. Cause, oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you got to not let door knocking affect that good mood too. You got to right. be able to carry that with you. Yeah. And it, it's a tough, I think as far as sales go, it's a really good, um, because for me, like I said, I, you know, I'm naturally more of an intro, introverted person. Mm-hmm. Like, so it was harder for me to like get in front of people and be like, "Hey, buy my product," or mm-hmm. you know, you know. But at, at the end of the day, it's really simple. Like, you're just there, and I kind of learned this through, um, you know, people. They, would, I would go knock on the door, and of course, you'll get like, "Hey, get out of my face!" Like, mm-hmm. I don't feel like talking to you right now. Yeah, you'll I, get some of that. That's cool. But, and, and and that's part of the game, but I kind of think what I wasn't expecting was like, you know, I'd get these, you know, 
ladies or these women, their husbands, they'd be, they'd been begging their husbands to pressure wash for mm-hmm. months. And, and they'd be like, Oh my God, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Like, thank you for coming. There's nothing more fulfilling than that. Yeah. Uh, it, once you get in a rhythm of it or you have some, some positive interactions, door knocking, like it becomes like sport. Yeah. You know it is. I mean? It's like a, it's like a competition with yourself. Yeah, it really is. So like, can you, can you do it long enough to get the next? Yes. You so, know what I exactly. Mean? Yeah. But it's a, uh, that's cool, man. That's, that's, uh, you know, cause we talked about that at BNI. Like if you had to move your business or you had to restart from square one, you're like, I would be very boots on the ground marketing door. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a skill that you've acquired and, and you know, it works and it's not a very expensive form of marketing. Right. And uh, it's super effective, but it's yeah. just tough to do. That's why people it do is. stuff to do. It's hard. It's hard to do. And I, I, I'm try, trying to get more consistent um, with it, um, just doing it daily. Um, because I think if you're in a market that um, door knocking works in mm-hmm. and you're not doing that, and I think you're losing out on yeah, some money. You're shorting yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are markets that, you know, door knocking isn't going to work as well. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and it depends on the market that you're playing into because, like, I have a guy that does, um, he, he does, like, house cleaning, like, mm-hmm. inside your house cleaning. But he's got a he's got a pretty robust company. He's probably got 20 people that work for him or something like that. But he only, his market is, like, Vinings, Buckhead, Alpharetta, all of the, the high-income areas of Atlanta, and they do no door knocking. He does right. all of his marketing on the internet and he yeah. markets hard you know because that's how those people buy you know you kind of sure. have to know how your people buy too you know absolutely yeah i think the bigger cities it would be um because you i mean you don't want to be knocking on somebody's door that may or may not pull a gun on you it's not, yeah. I, mean, I mean you have to worry about that kind yeah, of thing for sure days, you know oh yeah no it's definitely it's a real thing yeah it's definitely a real thing but that's cool man so tell me um if there's anybody that wants to buy something from you right now right how do they get a hold of you and like what are what are some of the things that they should be looking out for you know problems that they may have that you can solve with some of your services um yeah so right now i have a website you can go to exterior solutions pros.com um and then Uh, finding that domain was tough huh yeah (laughs) finding the one that was left right yeah and i think and i had initial initially i had a one that was like it, uh, it was a different website name, but it had Rome on the end of it. Mm-hmm. So, but, I see um, it on your shirt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, roof washing, concrete cleaning and house washing. Um, you know, so that's basically my main three. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I try to focus on. Yeah. Dirty concrete, dirty roof, dirty house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, living that's under it. a bunch of trees. That's it. Yep. Yeah. No, I feel that. And, um, you know, kind of the way that we always in the podcast is a little bit of allusion to the, the name of the podcast, Burn the Ship. What does it feel like to go all in on your business? You know, after you've been working, you've been in the military, uh, you've been in construction for years, you've always had that spirit of entrepreneurship and wanting to kind of, you know, control your own destiny. Uh, what does it feel like when you flip that light switch and say, okay, I'm going all in on my business. I'm not doing it part time anymore. I'm committing to it. Like, what is that feeling like? And why should other people that kind of have that same itch seek out that same experience? Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the best feelings that you can have. It's like growing, you know, if you were to grow a little tomato plant or something Mm -hmm. and you put so much effort into growing this plant and finally it, you know, you're able to, um, harvest your, your, your plant or your crop. Um, there's nothing better than being able to harvest your own crops. Um, I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but, um, that's kind of, it's, it's a really good feeling. Um, to know that you started something and then also you're growing on the back end and then making it better. Yeah, no, for sure. It's just a big work in progress. You know, right. it'll always be a big work in progress, but uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's a journey. It's difficult, but it's very, very rewarding. And uh, it's all on you. You know yep. what I mean? You get to look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, did I do the things that are going to be make me successful or did I not do the things that are going to make yep. me successful today? You know, and right. you can break that down hour by hour and minute by minute. And, um, you know, you're really in control. You're in the driver's seat and it's a cool feeling. So, right. well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on. Um, uh, maybe we'll do this again at some point in the future and we'll sit back and, and laugh at how far you've come. That's right. <laughs> um, that's yeah, a good experience. I've done that a few times with people that have come on here, you know, a year or two later and, 
Um, we watch some of their first podcasts of them talking about their brand new and they're still figuring stuff out or like solutions that they have at that time that they don't implement anymore in their business because they found a better way, you know, so sure. like, business evolves, business changes. And that, and that goes both ways, right? If your business is not where you want your business right now, uh, it can be, you know, there, it, you just have to find a way to make it work for you. So, yeah. um, thanks for coming, Lee, exterior cleaning solutions. Uh, I'm looking forward to having you back, my friend. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. Cool. Thank you. It's been Burn the Ship. All right.